Um, my name is Mike Sush. I am a developer uh, with SquareDesign.com. It's uh, my little, it's a very small web shop because it's in my house. Um, I've been developing WordPress themes and uh, plugins for a couple years now, and uh, I want to share with you today WordPress theme construction. And the, the construction thing is kind of a bit that will carry forward. Hopefully, it doesn't get too campy. This is just a, a paraphrasing of, of the course of the description of the session, but what I really want you to walk away from this with is a, an understanding of the, the files that are essential for WordPress to recognize what a theme is, um, some of the best practices for uh, abstracting code out into smaller files, like all that stuff you see in a, in a theme if you ever downloaded and unzipped one and taken a look at it. Um, and the, the really essential blocks of code that will make your theme uh, compatible with plugins and, uh, and maintainable going forward in the future and um, how, to, how to use the, the template architecture in WordPress to then kind of be able to customize parts of your site without having to get into like PHP and logic and that kind of stuff. Um, and then I'm gonna wrap it up with talking about child themes and how you can use child themes to make changes to your site uh, and test them out and develop them without the whole public seeing you break everything as you go. So um, that's the uh, on the program today. So the the very basic things you need to have a WordPress theme um, are really just something that provides structure um, of how the content gets into it and something that gives it some sort of a style. Um, so it's kind of like kind of like construction in that way. And for WordPress. Really, the, the bare minimum that we need is, uh, is our two files, are an index.php file um, that grabs the posts and then a style sheet that really doesn't have to style it, it just has to tell WordPress that it, this is your theme and where to find the parts of it. So, um, and to prove it to you, which will be, should be super exciting, um, I have, here we go, WordPress install, the sexy new 3.2 interface and uh, our current theme is the awesome 2011 and I am going to activate my super minimal theme so all of this goodness that we see is just going to go away and be a big field of bacon ipsum um, this is just posts in the page but if we look at the code here's our style sheet there is no style it's just telling WordPress this is a theme and this is where to find the stuff and then there's very, very minimal, just the bare bones. And we'll get into to some of this uh, in a bit when we talk about functions. But that, that's, that's really all you need to, to make a WordPress theme. Um, ah, font sizes. OK, yes, that was probably quite boring. It'll get better. Um, so now that we have kind of the basics and the overall shell of the theme, we, we get into template parts. Um, and there are a few that are special that we're going to cover in a second, but uh, the reason why we want to abstract stuff out in template parts is our, you know, the fundamentals of programming where you don't want to repeat yourself, the DRY. Um, and we don't want to have to copy and paste stuff. If you've got a static HTML website, you have to copy and paste blocks of code to every page, and when you update it, you have to copy it everywhere. We've, we've probably all been through this, so. Um, the, I call these the big three template files that you'll find in any, any WordPress uh, theme. Um, and the first one being the header, um, and it's, it's special. It has its own WordPress uh, template tag or PHP function called getHeader that gets header, ironically named. Um, it has the footer with getFooter and the sidebar asterisk um, that we get with get sidebar. I'll talk about a little more about sidebar in a few minutes. Um, so let's start with the header. What you'd normally find in the header PHP file is what you'd find in the top of any HTML document. Uh, you have your doc type, HTML5 doc type, represent. Um, the normal stuff you'd see in the head tag, the title, the meta, um, everything you'd see at the top of the body tag. You know, you've got your HTML5 header and maybe a nav element um, uh, where you include your CSS and your JavaScript. But the, the super important thing here is the WP head function call template tag for WordPress. Um, and what this does is this tells plugins and stuff that the theme has started to render and this is happening as we're rendering the head of the theme. So if you have a, a plugin that needs to output a style sheet, you have a plugin that needs to output JavaScript, um, it's going to have to hook into the, where this WP head appears in your code. Um, and if you don't have that, 
you you'll start to notice that plugins don't work. Um, and that's where um, I, I know I skipped uh, WP and Q script that I have in blue here. Um, that WordPress function is actually the preferred method for uh, for adding JavaScript to your site because it will then output it in the WP head and it won't re reload things twice. So if two different plugins need jQuery, if you, if they use WP and Q scripts and you do also, you're only going to get one copy of jQuery instead of three, which is good because jQuery is pretty big. Um, I should have mentioned in the beginning, if anybody has any questions as you go along, um, there's a gentleman with a microphone over here. Um, he can come around and see your question can be recorded along with the answer. So just go ahead and throw a hand up. Um, hopefully I haven't dug too deep yet. So the footer is very, very similar. Um, the footer has an uh, important function in it, um, in addition to your HTML5 footer, um, has a function called WP footer, which gets executed at the end of the page load. And if you ever noticed, the biggest uh, support call I get is when people switch their theme and uh, their Google Analytics stops working. Their analytics plugin stops working and they try another analytics plugin and that stops working and the first thing I look for is in their theme file, um, their theme is missing this call to WP footer because most of uh, the Google Analytics plugins want to load that code at the end of the page so it doesn't slow down the rendering of the page. So if that WP footer is missing, the plugin doesn't know where to inject the JavaScript code at the end of the page. Um, sidebar is special. Um, there was a time with WordPress, uh, not sure how long ago, but we didn't have the, we didn't have widgets. We didn't have the dynamic sidebars. And you, when you wanted to make a sidebar, you had to put essentially functions into a file called sidebar.php, like WP register and login out, which it will display contextually the login or log out, depending on, you know, whether you're logged in or logged out. Um, but now we've, you know, if you look in, in anything you download, a lot of them will have a sidebar PHP file, but pretty much the only thing in there is a, are calls to this function called dynamic sidebar, um, because we have widgets now, and widgets are really, really cool. And there are widgets that provide you with the login out button and the register and the search form, and you know, if you search the plugin directory for things that provide widgets, there's lots and lots and lots of stuff. So, um, so sidebar PHP, it, it's good to have, but you don't necessarily have to have a sidebar PHP file. You can put a call to dynamic sidebar right into, right into your theme file. Um, so if we, yes, sir. Oh, Mike's coming. <laughs> Is the mic on? There we go. Hi. Um, can you mix them or is it dangerous? For instance, if I want to not use the stock meta tag with all the stuff that goes with the meta tag and mm -hmm. just have a login logout mm -hmm. and still have dynamic sidebars, can I do that? Um, the, there is a widget that provides just the login logout functionality, I'm fairly sure, um, that ships with it. Let's see, since we're here. And we're looking at widgets. Oh, in this theme, I have no sidebars to find. So let's switch to. It's a perfect segue to my demo, and I'll cover it when I when I'm demoing this theme. Okay. I've I've made a slightly more advanced theme that has. I'll the remind you. Okay, thanks. That has the header and the footer and the sidebar. So, let's activate that one. And uh, I do have uh, things in the sidebar on this one. I think. Okay, let's add them. Have meta. Okay, we just have the full meta. So there's your answer. There's got to be one that provides it. That is my current theme. And it has widgets. And I've had widgets to find. Okay. Well, if we demo this one, if we look at the code for it, It's trying to load jQuery off of the CDN, I believe, instead of off of local. So I need the internet. So if we look at this one, I do have a header now. Uh, this theme is a little bit more complex. And I do have a footer with a very, very small copyright in the bottom. And I should have a sidebar. Yeah, I've, I've been dragging it. All right. 
Yep. I don't think we're getting jQuery loaded in the page. <laughs> ah. I'm, from my angle, I can't actually see my screen. Thank you. Crowdsourcing. Awesome. Let me tip this back a little bit so I can... Yes, there we go. All right, so yes, as we'd imagine, now we have stuff. Um, I, th there's got to be a third-party uh, widget plugin that only provides the login logout. I just don't know it off the top of my head. I'm sorry. Oh, Mike's coming. There's a widget you can download. It's called Mini Meta. One Mini word. Meta. Yep. It gives awesome. you control over exactly what shows up there and um, adding other stuff that you want to as well. Cool, cool. There's our answer. Crowd crowdsourced again. Fantastic. So another another fairly, uh, you know, a little bit less boring. We had some some dynamic stuff in there. Um, now, so one thing to point out that's really important, this is there's got to be a presentation that talks about the loop, and uh, I get to be that presentation this year. Um, the loop is, in a, is kind of a, it's a series of, of a combination of PHP and a combination of custom WordPress things that get our posts and do stuff with them. So I'll start with the summary for it. Um, this is the, the logic in the loop. Basically, what it asks is, do we have any posts? Um, okay, f if we have them for, for each of the posts, we need to do something. Uh, we'll set up the data to make it easier to use and output to people, and then we'll actually output it to them. Um, so let's go take a look at the code for that real quick. And I need the less minimal theme for that. So, oh, see our header call up there? Cool. So the first thing it asks is, do we have any posts? Uh, while we have those posts, the post. When the post just kind of takes all the data as it came from the database and sets it up so that we can use nifty things like the title and the content. And then we're done. Or we have an else condition. If it didn't find any, we should give somebody a friendly message that says, yeah, this is terrible. Sorry that didn't work for you. So basically, do we have posts? We should do something with them if we have them, set up the data so we can use it, and then output it to people. Um, in WordPress 3.0, they introduced uh, a way for us to kind of do our own custom template parts that instead of just the header and the footer and the sidebar. Um, we now have a function available to us called get template part, um, and we specify a, uh, one or two parameters for that. The first one is slug, and the second one is optional, and that's name. And I'll, I'll get, a, get more into that a little bit. But it's basically a, kind of a snazzy way for you to include uh, files. Um, based, don't run away from this, I'll, I'll explain it all, but it kind of, it gives us a way to customize how the content is displayed based on the type of content it is or the context that we're in. So if we, if we go down the list here, um, let's go back and see, right now we've got, we've got an article and we're outputting the content, or the titles in NH2 and we're outputting the full article content, right? Now, that's great if we're if we want to show the full content everywhere, um, and we want it to have a heading level of H2 for the title everywhere, which is probably not really good. I mean, like on the home page, we're going to want to structure the headings differently than on the archive page. Um, when we display a single post by itself, we want it to have an H1 for the title instead of having an H2 or an H3. So, what this lets us do is abstract our thinking to. Um, create little blocks of code that will format the post depending on where it is in the site. That's the, this is one of the uses for it. It's how it, what I like to do a lot. So I'll create, I'll take this block, the article, article block that I've made, and I'll customize that for, uh, for the home page, for, you know, an, an excerpt where I'm going to show just a list of posts, um, maybe, you know, with a little bit of data, or on date archives, I'll show just a list of titles. Um, so I, I create a post called post list for that. Um, and for single pages or single posting displays, I create a, a template part called post full that displays the full content. Um, and the cool thing about how it loads this is, um, if, I make, if I make a call for, to get, get template part with post list, it's going to look for post-list.php in my theme directory. 
Um, if it doesn't find that, it'll always fall back to just post.php. So if you if you get ahead of yourself and you're embedding the tags and you haven't created the files yet, you're you know you're good to go. Um, so let's look back at that header and footer and sidebar. Are they really special or not? Um, get header and get footer act kind of like get template part because they accept a parameter also. They accept that second slug parameter. So if I added a parameter to get header and added home, it would actually look for a file called header home. Um, if I added footer archive or you can customize left sidebars and right sidebars and stuff like that and you can use this parameter to pull in a separate chunk of code that way. Um, so they, they get really, really clever with this inside of uh, the new 2011 theme. I, I love every time they update the default themes to get in there and see what, you know, what automatic has been doing. But they end up having, they call theirs instead of post dash, they call them content dash. And they, they customize theirs based on whether it's an image type, whether it's embedded in a gallery, whether it, they just want to see the intro text, whether they, it's a quote embedded somewhere. It's, uh, it's really neat if you get in here and dig around. But the gist of it will basically be these are different ways to, to logically organize your code that formats your content a different way depending on where people are viewing it, whether they're viewing it in a list, whether they're viewing it in a summary list, or whether they're viewing it all on its own. So to wrap things up that we've already talked about, the, ba the bare minimum stuff you need are an index PHP file and a style sheet file. Um, most of most themes are going to have a header and a footer and a sidebar by default. Um, I don't think I've really seen a, an available theme that didn't have those three things. Um, it's really, really important that we have a WP head uh, tag and a WP footer tag so that plugins work and they know where to inject their code. Um, and if we're going to use sidebars, we're kind of moving towards using dynamic sidebars so that we get widgets and stuff like that, as long as you tilt your screen the right way and you can see the box open and close. <laughs> um, the loop is just a simple block of code that asks if we have any posts, and if we do, it does something with them. And uh, template parts let us to to organize our code efficiently, uh, depending on I keep saying content and context. So I know you, we've all seen a, uh, an available theme, and there's a lot more in there than just an index and a header and a footer. So what's all that other stuff? This is where the WordPl WordPress template hierarchy comes in, which um, I think is really, really cool to customize certain parts of your site. Um, most will also, I also have a big three templates I talk about where most themes will come with a page uh, PHP file that will, you know, be used to display pages, um, a single file that will be used to display single posts, um, and archives that will display categories, tags, any sort of date-based archive file. Um, but if you remember the slug and name format from the template part, this, this applies with these files also. Um, so if you wanted to, if you're looking for, uh, if you've got a blog with cats and dogs and you want to just isolate, make the display a little different for, uh, you know, if somebody requests a category archive of dogs, um, the first thing it's going to look for is a file called category-dogs, if dogs is the category slug. Um, and if it doesn't find that, it'll fall back and just look for a category.php file. And if it doesn't find that, it'll fall back and look for an archive.php file. And if it doesn't find that, it always comes back to the index.php file. So you can get really, really fine-grained control over, over code for specific parts of your site if you want to. And um, th it, it's almost... This is all linked from the codex, uh, and you can dig through this later, but uh, WP Candy put together a, a pretty cool spreadsheet of the decision that's made by WordPress, the file it looks for, if that file doesn't exist, it looks for another one, and if that doesn't, file doesn't exist, it all comes back to the index.php file. So you click on that later, print it out, hang it up in your cube. Um, I, I, really, I really like the idea of this, because I know a lot of people that do, that have uh, portfolio sites and they kind of work in mixed media, either they're, you know, they're like a painter or an artist or they're a photographer, um, you can customize, you can keep all the stuff, all your posts in the same feed, but if it's like a photography post, you may want to not have the sidebar and you want the photo to take up the full page. If it's a music post, you may embed an MP3 and you want to have like your gig list embedded from Google Calendar underneath it. There's a question in the back. So. 
oh, he's coming over with microphone. So just you can you can kind of tailor this to the type of content that's being displayed, which I really like. Yes, sir. Can you talk about the difference between templates and custom post types, and when you want to use one and when you want to use another? Uh, yes, custom post types. Um, I think that talk was this morning, so I can't recommend you to sit through it because it's in the past. But go back and look at it. Um, in in WordPress 3.0, 2.9, 3.0, it gave us the option to expand on just the model of pages and posts to actually create our own thing. So it could be albums or widgets or whatever. Well, widget, you know, widget's a sidebar widget. Um, so it's uh, it's a little more complex than than I was going to get into here, but essentially it lets you group types of data into a whole new bucket, essentially. Like these are posts and these are uh, products is, is a huge one, especially if people have like shopping cart stuff. Um, I tend to like to keep everything is in the same collection as I can in post collection, just so that like your RS feed, your RSS feed is all unified and if you have like a Twitter plugin that tweets things, it always tweets stuff like that, I kind of like to keep it mixed. Um, if you're going to mix, you know, like the corporate news blog and you have uh, products post type, you probably don't want, you know, press release, new product, press release, new product to show up in your RSS feed. So I think you really have to think about how people are going to be consuming it, whether they're going to, you know, want to see just one type of your content and whether um, it makes sense to make the leap to use custom post types. Um, I, I don't know if that adequately answered your question, but no. Um, I wasn't going to talk about post types. Um, I'm in the expert zone tomorrow. Come by and, and, and harass me. Um, so this, this lets us customize kind of the display of, of different types of content um, depending on what it is and, and how people are using it. So um, the last thing I want to talk about is child themes. And I, I'm a huge fan of child themes. And if anyone has ever used a template framework, um, th it's a really good thing to know. It's kind of a theme within a theme. Um, go deeper. Um, it kind of let, it lets us to it lets us essentially say this is my parent I want to get all the stuff from this theme but all the files included in my specific theme should trump the ones in the parent theme and this is really important when we're talking about frameworks um, so if you're going to make a child theme the, the absolute bare minimum you need is a style sheet and really you, all you need is a style sheet for a child theme um, but you can then override and include your own functions file to, you know, provide additional functional functionality, or you know, you can trump any of the other templates we talked about, or any of the other parts, uh, template parts that we talked about, or you can just inherit them from the parent. And this, yeah, this is really important. When we're talking about themes because if you if you purchase thesis, uh, like the last gentleman who talked, and you paid seventy dollars for it, you know it's going to be updated. And if you went in and you actually made changes to the copy that you downloaded. If you want to upgrade to the new version, then you have to remember all the changes you made and apply them to the new one. Instead, you should really be not editing it and you should make a child theme of the thesis theme that you purchased and just put all of your deltas in there. So you can always upgrade whether you use hybrid or thesis or you just base it on 2010 or 2011. Oop, Mike's coming. So I totally understand the use of child themes with a particular theme. Does it ever make sense to have a child theme that's minimal enough that it can work with multiple themes? Like you're just changing the header or you're just... I've seen, um, the, yes, absolutely, because I've seen instances where uh, like a corporation will want to have their, their website in WordPress as a CMS, but they kind of want you know, their product site and their blog site to also be in WordPress and they all want to make them look unified but the, the parent theme for the corporate, the corporate site will be something like hybrid or thesis. The parent theme for the blog might be something simpler. Um, the parent theme for uh, the shopping cart, you know, and the store will, will be, you know, something a shopping cart targeted. And you can use the same child theme to override the styles of all of the three parents to make them all, you know, have this, the same visual look and feel and fonts and, and stuff like that. So but, uh, that's excellent. That should have been another bullet point. <laughs> yes, sir. Is there like a performance issue at all? Like, 
Um, Let's say if you're not gonna make a lot of changes in your child theme, can you just put that in your main theme and like save some like time, or is there even does it matter? Uh, God, Doug, Doug Crockford would would disagree with me. Um, I don't think there's there's a lot of performance hit because it's basically it's just loading files from a different location, and WordPress doesn't necessarily look for the file system to see that the files are there every time the page is loaded. Um, when you activate and deactivate themes, it looks for them and keeps them in a database. To, to know what what theme parts it has, and I think with WP Cron, every few page loads it'll update that, or you know, on a schedule. So I don't think there's a huge performance hit. There, it does make you load an additional CSS file, um, and that leads right into my demo, if uh, if you don't mind. Um, I've made a child theme of uh, 2011. Everybody loves 2011, but. Sometimes we just have to change something. So let's activate 2011 and come back over here. And uh, my child theme, it couldn't be more simple. I'm calling it 3011. We can. And uh, th there's really not a lot in the style sheet here. Um, this looks like a normal, normal WordPress theme. Uh, style sheet. It has the author URL and everything, but the interesting part here is when we put this tag in here that says template, it's going to look for the parent in that directory in the 2011. Um, and then the other, where the, where the only performance hit we would deal with is we're loading one style sheet and then we're, we have to import the style sheet from the parent. That's really the, 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 the most hit we're going to have is an extra file to load in the browser. Um, and the only thing I changed here uh, is just the, the page background. And it can be that minimal. I mean, if you just want to change styles, this is a, this is a fully relevant uh, child theme that all it has is, uh, is a few different style rules. So 3011, there we go. So I'll activate that. And uh, now my dirt background is in place of, of 2011's background. Um, but this is huge. If you want to use this um, going forward, if you're going to make incremental updates to your website, and you don't want to break it for everybody that's viewing, everybody else in the world that's viewing your website, and the trick I use for this is I'll make a child theme um, of the existing theme, whatever it is, um, and then I use a plugin called User User Theme, where you can choose which theme people see based on what their uh, logged in status, whether they're a subscriber or an author, or, or you can just set it for a specific user. I create a user called beta, and I let the client log in with that. Um, so the whole world who's not logged in is going to see the existing theme, and the people using the beta user are going to see the beta theme as you, as you go forward and continue to update that for them. So, um, a, a word of warning with that, I wouldn't use that for like all administrators or for your own personal login, because you can make changes to a theme that break the admin. In instances, if you have like bad PHP code in your functions file or something, so definitely don't set that for your admin user. Create a beta user that you log in just for testing um, and to, to see the new theme. What and it's in to see clients really love this because they can see their new website with their con with real content without having to use bacon ex ipsum or lorem ipsum or you know quote some Futurama or whatever you want to put in there. Um, so. We've got about 10 minutes left for questions. Um, I'm going to put this up online at squaredesign.com, WC Boss, during lunch. Um, so, and these are all live links to the codex and, and stuff that I talked about. Um, so you'll be able to view this whole slide deck. Um, just some stuff to look at. Yoast has a really awesome article that, um, if you have the time to scroll and read it all, it explains this with diagrams and visuals. And they get into a lot more detail than I can in, in half an hour quickly. Um, and a link to the plugin I talked about. And if you have more questions for me, I'll be in the, uh, we've got 10 more minutes for questions, and I'll be in the expert zone tomorrow afternoon. So do we have more questions? Thank you.